Welcome back. We have been covering this breaking news. Another mass shooting happening in America. This one happening in Uvalde, Texas, around 1130 local time happening at Robb Elementary. As you can see on that banner across your screen, right now we can confirm 14 children and one teacher were shot and killed. We know that the shooter, 18-year-old Salvador Ramos, is deceased as well. Authorities saying he was killed at the scene by a bullet from a member of the SWAT team after a shootout. Governor Greg Abbott giving an update uh, about an hour and a half ago saying that Ramos inside the school was found with a handgun, possibly with an uh, assault style rifle as well. We know that several AR style magazines were found on the scene. In addition to the 15 people who are now dead, we know that Three adults and one child are currently in critical condition at the hospital. Right now we know a 10-year-old girl, one of the hospitalized, a 66-year-old woman, also hospitalized in critical condition. We are waiting to find out the gender and the ages of the other two adults who are currently in critical condition. We know there was a staging area set up away from the school. At this point, um, all of the parents have been reunited with their children. Right now, authorities not giving a lot of information, waiting sadly to to notify those families who who will not be reunited with their loved ones uh, tonight we have several journalists live on the scene one of those independent journalist ali bradley has been there since shortly after this happened around 11 30. she was there shortly after it happened gathering info talking to eyewitnesses let's listen to one of her interviews with one of those eyewitnesses now I would like to bring in actually a gentleman that was, that's standing right here that's actually working on the home right next door. He heard everything. He saw a lot of the, the situation happen. Can you kind of just describe what you saw happen here, sir? Yeah, so he crashed into the ditch and um, two guys from the funeral home went out there to check on him and he, he, uh, he fired at them. He fired shots. So he fired shots outside before right. he even went into the elementary school. Correct. Did yeah. you see him go into the elementary school? Yeah, I seen him jump the fence right here. He jumped the fence and he had a backpack and he had a he had a rifle. And uh, he jumped the fence and he went to that corner up there, to the back corner on the right. And I believe he shot in there into that window back there. And that's when the cops pulled up over here, and then there was one UCISD police that went all the way in there, mm -hmm. and I think that's what caused him to come back this way. Okay, so he was kind of when drawn out by officers a little bit. By, by, the, by the UCISD police, right. Okay. All right, that was an interview happening about an hour ago with independent journalist on the scene, Allie Bradley speaking with an eyewitness to the tragic events that unfolded today. You're taking a live look at some cell phone video shot earlier today. Obviously, a very chaotic scene, Allie. Uh, you've been doing great work out there. Tell us what we know so far about the shooter, Salvador Ramos. Well, actually, I just talked to another eyewitness who witnessed the, the speeding by of, of his vehicle and watched it crash, and he actually went to school with him. He is 18 years old now, this young man that I talked with, and he says he hasn't been in school with the suspected shooter for the last two years, so he believes that he dropped out of school. But I asked him, was there any indication that this is a person that would have done something like this, that would have gone into an elementary school and killed 14 children and a teacher and his, and his grandmother? And he said, no, not at all. He was pretty quiet. He said that there was nothing, he used the word sketchy, that, that showed anything that would have been a reason that he would have kind of been, you know, been watched to, that would have, you know, potentially have done something like this. And, and now, you know, at this point, he said it's really hard because this is such a small community and he watched the vehicle speed by and he said, we see a lot of pursuits out here. A lot of human smuggling and drug smuggling pursuits happen in these small communities. So we thought nothing of it, but he had the same exact story as Juan, the, the gentleman that you just heard from. Reiterate, they were not together when, you know, when I heard these interviews and they had the exact same story where the vehicle crashed. He got out, those funeral directors came out and, and kind of wanted to see if everything was okay. And that's when the shot started firing. And, they, and this young man actually watched him jump over the fence as well and get into those school grounds over there. You know, and, and for people watching at home right now, Allie, and I know that, that you can't see the screen, but we are taking a look at that black pickup truck. So you mentioned the grandmother. So for people who may have just tuned in, explain how 
the shooter's grandmother plays into all this. Explain how that black pickup truck, explain that chase. Just explain what happened before this mass shooting occurred. So I actually just was by the grandmother's residence as well. That is another street that is completely blocked off that no one has access to. And it's about a mile from the scene. And, and both of these gentlemen said that it didn't look like he was going after the school targeting the school if you will it was more like the truck crashed right there and that was the that was the building that he ran into after shooting and killing his grandmother about a mile down the road in that same neighborhood so shooting and killing his grandmother and then there was a bolo a bee on the lookout that's why this chase was happening correct because they were pursuing him for shooting and killing his grandmother i i don't i actually believe that he was a murder suspect already i don't i don't know if they were on the radar with the grandmother or if he had another charge. That's something I'm working to find out right now. Law enforcement are not really um, disclosing a lot of information, but he's, he was a murder suspect, and it might have been from his grandmother, but those situations happen so closely, um, you know, and I don't know the timeline of that at this juncture right now. Okay, and now I know you're working on that. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, this situation just continuing to unfold. So the suspect may or may not have been a murder suspect in something completely unrelated. But we do know that shortly before this mass shooting at the elementary school happened, he is accused of shooting and killing his grandmother, then fleeing that scene. So, Ali, I know that you arrived shortly after this tragedy occurred at around 1130 local time there. Kind of walk us through what you saw when you arrived on scene. Right when I arrived on scene, there was obviously caution tape set out, but it was not uh, really, really far away from the scene. So I was actually able to get very close. And there were several different agencies that had responded. We saw Border Patrol, DPS is down here, local municipal um, law enforcement agencies are down here, the sheriff. Uh, but they also had several helicopters on scene. But right when, you, right when I arrived on scene, there was a truck crash with the wheels basically bent off on this, like, kind of bowed out on the side. And you could tell that that was where the vehicle had stopped and crashed after that pursuit. And, you you know, you could get very, very closely to everything. But some of the DPS officers, the troopers that I was talking to, they actually had blood on their clothing that they were inside that building responding and, and working with these, these people that were hurt and, and some that, of course, we now learn have lost their lives. And such a chaotic scene. We know that there was a staging area away from the scene. We're taking a look at some of those those faces of just absolute grief. Again, we know that this is every parent's worst nightmare. You send your kids to school to learn, think that they're going to be safe. Um, Ali, I know that, again, there was a staging area away from the scene. But, of course, I think people's natural reaction when something like this happens, they want to come to the school. They want to come to the scene of the crime. And you had a chance uh, to speak to some of those family members, some of those those residents in the neighborhood. Yes, I did, actually. And one of the there was another woman that actually just arrived not long after I had spoken with you guys um, in the last hour. And they actually were looking for their niece and nephew. They still hadn't heard what was going on with them. So, you know, we're talking about all these families have been reunited, but this woman just 10 minutes ago told me that she didn't know if her niece and nephew were safe. They couldn't locate them. They didn't know if they had been flown to San Antonio. They didn't know if they were at the Memorial Hospital. They, they couldn't locate them. So there are still a lot of distraught families out there, it appears, that don't know what's going on. But there was a woman who was running from the scene, and I stopped her. I said, ma'am, is your child okay? And she said, I don't know, but it's not my child. And she was on speakerphone with someone else. So this woman, I'm, I'm making the assumption that she lived nearby and was kind of checking on, on the situation for her mom or for a friend, rather. But I will tell you this. One of, the, one of my sources is a Border Patrol agent who has a child that goes to that school, a, a, a third-grade little boy, and the mom has been reunited with him. But I know I'm going out to their house to, to kind of talk with her a little bit, and it's 36 minutes away. These families aren't nearby. This isn't like these small you know, cities that we know that we're aware of, you know, the regular norm. These are these people travel pretty far for school. So this mom lives almost 40 minutes away to get here and respond to what was happening to her children. They didn't know if their child was safe for hours. The Border Patrol agent was telling me he did not know if his son was alive. Absolutely terrifying. And Allie, you mentioned a source there, the Border Patrol agent who was a source. Talk about uh, some of the information that he has given you so far. Well, I have, you know, received the timeline, basically, of, of what's going on. I have seen 
and that's what I've been able to really share with you guys of when this started and when they were responding. And, you know, they, they actually called in for additional armored vehicles. They, they had San Antonio police that they were going to be en route with tactical operators down here as well. So, so this source has been someone that I've cultivated over the last nine months because I've been down here doing border coverage. You know, and all of these agencies responded rather quickly because they're down here for a different problem. They've been down here for months, either deployed under Operation Lone Star, or they've been down here federally as Border Patrol agents because of the influx of illegal immigration and smuggling uh, situations that have been happening down here. So that, I, I would say, you know, if there's one thing that was not positive, because that's the wrong word to use, but something that, that you know, that, that was nice that they were able to respond as quickly as they were because they were out here for a different crisis. Right. You know, and I think something we talk about the horror of this, we talk about this being, you know, every parent's worst nightmare. We have to remember this is an elementary school, about 600 students enrolled there. This is only grades second, third and fourth. So these are very young children who may not even truly understand what's happening. And Ali, I know you mentioned the fact that you, you saw law enforcement there. You saw that huge response. Did you happen to see any of the children as, as they filed out? I did not. I was not there at that time. I didn't see any buses. I did see some helicopters uh, take off, but I do not know if they were airlifting any children. I couldn't get close enough, and no law enforcement would confirm that with me. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Ali Bradley, independent journalist, doing excellent work out there. Thank you so much. Please stick around, uh, and we will be back with more of this breaking news coverage. A mass shooting at a Texas elementary school. 14 children and one teacher confirmed dead. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.